Welcome to another episode of One on One with Miss LaFawn. Joining me this week is UFO and Sebastian Bach bassist Rob DeLuca. We talk about UFO's latest album, A Conspiracy of Stars, and their upcoming U.S. tour, which starts in March in Akron, Ohio. Without further ado, here is Rob DeLuca. We are talking to Rob DeLuca of UFO. The uh, latest album is A Conspiracy of Stars, came out earlier in 2015. Uh, Rob, a great pleasure talking to you today. My pleasure also, Mitch. It's good to be here. Good. So so there's a lot to, uh, to catch up on. Uh, let's start with the most recent history, if possible. Uh, you just finished a tour with Judas Priest out in Europe. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and, and getting to be in front of the metal god or opening up for the metal god every night. It really was a blast, and uh, they really still are an incredible band. Like they're really at the, at firing on on the top of their level still, and I was so impressed with that because I hadn't seen them in a while. I mean, we did one show with them, UFO did one show with them like three years ago, but we had a we didn't get there till just before we went on, and we had another show the next night. We had a roll, you know, so. So I hadn't really seen them since I was a kid and I wasn't sure, you know, if it was how it was going to be. And it was really great. Richie's definitely put a lot of youthful energy back into the band and um, everyone is really inspired. Uh, So they treated us amazing. They played amazing. The crowds were amazing. It really was an incredible experience. So and I love playing those big stages. So it was it was really cool. Now you've got, uh, when I say you, of course, UFO has a tour coming to North America in March of 2016. You're starting off in Akron, Ohio. Now these, of course, are solo dates. You're headlining. There's no opening for anybody on this one. Right, yeah. Just uh, doing clubs and theaters. So so talk to me about that tour. The band, uh, you know, hasn't been to Canada recently, which I certainly would love to see more of. Uh, is this just sort of a, a quick March run, or is this sort of the beginning of more North American touring for 2016? I would guess that, I haven't heard anything, but I would guess that it's there's going to be more in 2016, and I think we would get back to, at least to Toronto, uh, which we did probably in 2013, I would guess. Right, it's been a uh, while. Rock, yeah, Rockpile East and West, so it's been a while. Um, so yeah, I would expect more because we're not doing any East coast dates on the March run and that doesn't make sense, you know, so I'm sure there'll be more coming. Yeah. Especially since you've got some incredible rock cities like Boston, New York, and Detroit, if you want to call it sort of East coast, uh, you can't ignore those markets. Yeah. We're, well, we will be in the Midwest. So, um, I think we're playing, um, we're playing in Michigan somewhere. So we won't be playing in Detroit. Oh, actually, you um, know what? I, I'm looking at your dates now. You are playing Detroit at the oh, Token okay. Lounge. All right. So forget okay. that. But, but you're still but yeah, missing a lot Boston. Of, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of places we're missing. Absolutely. So let's get into Conspiracy of Stars. The album came out earlier this year, 2015. This is your first chance or first time recording with the band. You've been touring with them for many years, but you, you weren't on the last album. Uh, tell me about being on a UFO album. How did you, uh, you know, how did you um, take it in terms of approach? It is the word I'm looking for. How did you approach it? Do you think okay, I got to look back to the old guys and 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 try to capture that sound, or is it just going to be Rob doing what Rob does? I think it, it's smartest to do what you do, um, because especially if you've been playing your whole life, you know, you got to rely on your instincts of of what it is that's that you know your strengths rely on your strengths you know so uh i just was focused on tone you know like having a really strong and foundational bass tone uh and uh you know grooving as as well as possible and and i wrote some songs on it also which was really fantastic so i didn't i didn't really think about it too much you know because also i've had the luxury of playing in this band for so long since 08 that uh you know it wasn't like it wasn't like i had to to get to you know over you know over analyze anything i mean because it's so comfortable playing with them 
after you know all this time and uh it was it, they certainly didn't make me feel intimidated or anything like that and it went really well you know we had a lot of fun it actually it was i, I don't remember any stress i remember a lot, having a lot of fun and that's the way it should be you know yeah, it really should be now you mentioned you've been there since 2008 seven deadly came out in 2012 uh, you weren't on it uh, lars lehman was on it um, how come you didn't play bass on that one? Was it just a scheduling conflict or? I think I sucked back then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then in two, that was 2008 and 2009, I, I didn't suck anymore or whatever the year right. that was 2012. So t- 2013, I got good. <laughs> right. Took a while. <laughs> Took some practice. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. And, and, uh, you know, I, we never really talked about it and I didn't get upset about it. Of course, as things, time was going on, I was touring with the band. I wanted to be more involved, but uh, you know, I I honestly never talked about it because I thought, you know, when when the time is right for everyone, even though I felt like the time was right for me to to get involved on that level, someone else must not have thought that. And and it could be, I think it's often about budgets. You know, like you got a guy right here in Germany. They recorded that record in Germany. You know, you got a guy right here in Germany who's played with Vinny on his solo stuff, uh, you know, or you got a guy across the, the ocean who, you know, you figure in salary, hotel, flights, you know, and I think it was more those kind of decisions. Um, but I think doing it, recording the band that is is the band is always the best. And, and we finally did that. And I think that's why this record i feel you know was was re- more recognized than the previous couple records you know yeah not little... just cuz me just because you you got a band that's been touring for for 7 years you know and it's just like a no brainer right cuz you're so. you're in that groove you're in that pocket um 2016 the conspiracy of stars tour is going to continue have you thought about making a new album yet is that something that's for 2017 or is conspiracy of stars we're done let's just sort of tour on the on the back catalog i think well no this band is always going to make new records uh it's just just a a given this band is not going to rest on its laurels and especially when things like you know the last album like i said it's the highest charting record they've had in like 30 years so oh it's a great sounding record thank you thank you and the highest charting in a while um so i think they're excited about that and uh it also shows that they still have something to say. We have still have something to say. And um, so, no, there is going to be more records. And we've talked about it. And it could even happen in 2016. I hope it does. We've definitely talked about it. Um, and it could at this point. That would definitely be great. Now, it would. I need to ask you about Sebastian Bach. You were in his band in 2005. You toured. Uh, opening up for Guns N' Roses. Uh, mm-hmm. Talk to me a little bit about working with Sebastian. There there seems to be a great divide in people that have worked with him. Either they love him or they don't. There, there doesn't seem to be any middle ground where, oh, well, he's okay. Um, how was it for you being in Sebastian's band? Well, I still am. Okay. So, um, so I got to watch what I say. No. <laughs> right, because... <I> think- <laughs> No, no, I'm just joking. No. He's, I think he's, I think he's one of the best frontmen out there today, and I think, um, you know that that dialogue that's been going on that there are no no more front men, great front men being born or or very few is true, and uh, and he's he's amazing, and I've seen him, you know, sick or hungover or whatever, and get up and or t- exhausted, you know, get up and do the most amazing shows. I mean, there were, what was a string where we did like n- nine or 10 in a row. I know some, some young punk bands might do that, but that's hard when you're singing in that range, you know, um, that box sings in and, uh, and those screams, you know? So I think he's incredible. I really do. And I've known him, f- I've played with him, since 05 and i've known him since he was in skid row and uh he doesn't seem to be slowing down and i think to answer the other part of your question that that's why i think people have polar 
opinions of him because he does he's relentless <laughs> you know he's going to he's going to barge through whether you like it or not and some people you know can't handle that but he is just not shy and he's never going to be you know and uh so it's a pleasure i have a lot of fun and you know i get to play with with Bobby Jerzombek and, and Brent Woods in that band and we have a we have a blast it's it's a really great band yeah, Brent uh, is great I'll give this to Sebastian. He has got an incredible amount of passion. I mean, he that's, is what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, it's his his enthusiasm for everything he does is really full on, and some people can't handle that because because the just the intensity, the power of that, like the the full onness of it, you know. So, um, and it, but it works well for him because if he doesn't like something, he 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 can't fake it, you know. And uh, I've I've seen that up 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 close, you know. He 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 pushes until until something is is the way he likes it, and then he gives his all. So I think it's a good quality, and um, yeah. I get along with him great. I really do, and uh, I actually respect him a lot. So yeah. So um, talking about that, then uh, you know, his last album was 2014, uh, which I think had. Duff McKagan on it. Is, mm-hmm. is there any any chance of you being on a next Sebastian Bach album? I don't know because it's a similar situation. You know, it's it's there's always conversations, not between me, but conversations of you know between the powers that be of budgets and things like that, and what coast you live on or what country you live in, etc. With, with UFO, um, and I'm not really involved in that conversation and if it happens great um i would do you know do well and if it doesn't happen i'm still enjoying playing with him live um i think once again though i think bands that tour should record because i think that's the strongest sound you're going to get but uh but does it upset me i really don't think about it too much because i'm so busy you know and uh so we'll see, you know. Yeah, well, we'll we'll talk about how busy you are. Spread Eagle was uh, is a band that you helped form back in the late '80s, signed to MCA Universal. Um, the band is it fair to say that maybe the band came out at the wrong time, considering that we were sort of changing from the glam to to the sort of Nirvanas of the world? Or uh, what do you account for the success or misses of Spread Eagle? I guess that is one of the factors of 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 a miss. You know, we we were a great band, and the band's actually still together. And right. we we were a fantastic band at that time, and still are. And I think it was a it was a question of or or a point of being that sound being so in, and then when it turned. You know, basically, for me, when that change started happening was when Alice in Chains started catching on, who were friends of ours, who were friends of Spread Eagles. And uh, it just made it like the people who were so cool a year before were so uncool, you know. And I didn't believe that, but I understood the tastes, the changing tastes of, of you know, of popularity, of style. And... uh it was it was tough at first, but in in hindsight, it was the best thing that that ever happened to me because it made me realize, learn about the how the music industry is, and learn about evolving. You know, um, just growing as a musician and never being too pigeonholed. Right. So uh, so we didn't we didn't do what what I feel we should have done, and but we were very respected and very powerful. Right now, in two thousand six, you did you did the reunion. You you remastered the first album, uh, but but it, for all intents and purposes, the last album was really nineteen ninety three. Is there any plans to record and 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 move forward with the band? There is not at this moment, you know. And and I think the important thing is to be honest. You know, um, we've been doing shows since since oh six, like you mentioned, and. And there was talk about it at one point where I thought it could happen. Um, 
but right now we're gearing back up to do some shows in 2016 and that could change but right now we're not focusing on that um once again I, i'm kind of busy so if things the, the things that are more of a possibility i'll focus on and uh things that are harder to make happen kind of just don't happen you know and we're all good friends and it's it's they're great guys uh and it, i if everyone really wanted to do it i would really want to do it you know so it has to get to that point before it can happen all right so let's talk about the the other project that you have going on of earth um basically what's what's just the status of of earth are are you are you still moving forward i think the last time something came out was 2013 um where are we with 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 that band um we've recorded four songs possibly five for the third album um that uh that i still have to finish um but it's been tough because um UFO went to Europe six times just in 2015, you know, and then Bach went to Australia and Canada and America. So it was a tough year for working on of Earth, but it's something that's very dear to me and very important, a very important for me, uh, muscle for me to flex, you know, because it's so different from everything else that I'm doing. And uh, so I will get the third record out and get a fourth record out eventually. So I think we're going to, you know, do some videos and stuff like that. And uh, so, you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, Slowly but I'm juggling. I'm juggling as many chainsaws as I can, you know. Which, which is good, though. It, it's important to be a working musician and not, not just a, a fan, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, both of Earth and Spread Eagle are on uh, November Records and... Uh, is that something that you own? I get a sense just by sort of clicking around the internet that it it, it all sort of falls back on Rob. Is yes. That, okay. It is. Okay. W which made sense to me. Is that just uh, the label for these two bands? Or at some point, do you think I want to find somebody else to sign up? Well, if originally it was not a label for just my stuff we we reissued angel on earth as it is in heaven and sold out of that um and we reissued spread eagles debut and sold out of that um but lately once again i've been so busy that at the moment it's just something for me but it's it's open for whatever right um so so let me just finish then with with ufo you know, when you look at some classic bands like Kiss or even Cheap Trick and, and others that have replaced members, there's always a contingency that says, well, you can't replace anybody. It's the originals or nobody. With UFO, UFO, of course, you've come in as a replacement player. Do you feel any pressure or, or, or do you get any criticism for it? Uh, to, to my face, I don't get any criticism. Um, and I saw them when I was in high school. So I understand that. And I understand, you know, I saw Guns N' Roses when I was a kid, you know, on their first East Coast tour and every one that followed till they had Buckethead. So I understand those feelings. You know, I saw Sabbath, you know, before Ozzy left, you know, um, the original run, you know, uh, Dan Halen on the original run. I totally understand all that. And, and I'm a fan, I'm a rock and roll fan just as much as anyone. But the reality is UFO's history is of having many people, you know, UFO have a long history with, with 21 studio albums, I believe. And, you know, Schenker wasn't there for a lot of those records, you know, uh, they, they had that middle period and then they had the Vinnie period. So the truth is it's fair to it's fairest to just judge it for for what it is at that moment because it's either I mean Vinny basically saved the band you know um, by coming in and being so solid and and uh offering so many so much material for so many years you know the band 
is respected again and 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 consistent again and dependable again and um if if Vinny didn't come into it i don't think the band would be alive you right. know i mean i respect the great phil mogg and and andy parker and paul raymond but but Vinny has really made it dependable in my opinion this right. is just my opinion and right. every, the guy next to me can have a completely different opinion i, I respect that so what would you rather have, you know, a, a great band that has evolved or, or nothing at all. And basically that are, that's the choices that I see. Right. And, and I agree with you too, as a, as a rock fan, I would rather have cheap trick touring. Is bunny there? No. Is Dax doing a great job? Of course he is. Same thing with kiss. There's nothing wrong with Eric Singer and, and, and Tommy Thayer is Ace and Peter better you know, if that would be what could go out there, sure. But I'm not going to complain. I'm happy to see it go forth. Uh, and then I just uh, we I forgot about Guns N' Roses. You uh, we you did open for for, for Guns N' Roses with Sebastian. Um, how was that tour for you? Because there was some you know the the band at the time was coming on late shows. You know, I saw a show in Quebec City where I think Guns N' Roses showed up at one in the morning. Um, was that difficult to tour in under those circumstances? No, because once again, it's it's a you know it's a dream situation to be in that position of opening for a band like that, and uh, and yeah, we 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 came through Canada a couple times that I remember. So so no, you know, I I just felt like I was lucky to be there because then when we would go to South America, it would be like three times as big you know it's just crazy and uh it, that was like that's storybook stuff that you remember forever and yeah. uh so i wouldn't be the guy to ask about being frustrated about that um but even though they were coming on late they they weren't canceling shows they didn't cancel any shows there was one canceled in all those we you know we toured for like oh, oh six oh seven oh eight Oh nine, oh and and eleven, a uh, ten and eleven. I think there were shows that we did with them. There might have been one of those years okay. where we didn't, but um, and I think there was. I only remember one canceled show, and that wasn't because of Axel or, or anyone. It was because of of the fire marshal and the, you know that kind of stuff. Um, so you know they were coming on late, but they were always playing, and they would play for like three hours or more. Yeah. So it's like, well, you know, thirty some songs. Yeah, so like I know you have to go to work, but you knew since 1988 that they were going to come on late, <laughs> and if you haven't gotten it by yet, you're just a little you know thick, right? And then they play 30 songs, and you know they're you know they're going to go on late anyway. So you know, I, I couldn't I couldn't really understand why people weren't getting that. Like the people that would show up and expect them to go on at nine o'clock or whatever i would just be like well you're just not thinking really you yeah know? you know i saw the band three or four times in that period and you know i said that sebastian had passion axel has a lot of passion for his music too and and you know the old saying if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck and so on it's a duck and same with guns and roses if every show starting at 10 30 11 and they show up in Hartford, and you show up at eight, and say, "Well, they're not on till 11. It's like, "Well, who's who's to blame here?" The internet has made it very clear that they're starting at eleven. Yeah. Show up at eleven, you know. And uh, you know, if they showed up at eleven and did ten songs and went home, okay, be pissed off. But they're doing three and a half hours, thirty. I think I saw thirty-seven songs one night. It's like, all right, listen, they came on late, but I was there till four in the morning. You got your money's worth. So. Yeah, absolutely. People really got their money's worth. They know? really did. And the band sounded great. Bumblefoot uh, on the shows that I saw, the, there was also Buckethead, but Bumblefoot was is, is a fantastic guitarist. He really is. Did you ever see it with, um, let me see, what was his name? The guy uh, from Nine Inch Nails. Uh, uh, Robin Fink. Fink. Did you ever see it with Robin Fink? I think I'm, I, I, I I think I saw them in like 2006, and then I saw another run where that had Sebastian and uh, Danko Jones opening. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, who's a great Canadian artist. And then um, the last couple, I think, had Bumblefoot. I think I've seen almost almost every uh, 
But, you know, you, you show up there for Axel. I, I, I didn't understand the complaints, quite frankly. Uh, when the show's up at 11 and they've been doing it every single town, every single night, at some point you got to go, oh, okay, I'll just show up later. You know, right. <laughs> anyway. And the proof uh, is in the pudding. Like if, if you walked out of there going, wow, I really got my money's worth. That's, that's really what most of the fans were, was the reaction of most of the fans. But, you know, you, you have the internet now and you're going to get a few people who had to be at work who didn't really either believe that they were going to go in late or didn't know. And then they, they end up being haters. But 98%, 95% of the people were like, wow, yeah. what a tour. You know, so that was the move with us, that, you know, the people on the inside who were like, you know, this tour is going down so well. Why worry about that that small percentage, you know, that are disgruntled? Yeah, absolutely. So, I agree. Um, uh, Rob, a great pleasure to talk to you today. Conspiracy of Stars is a great return to form for UFO. Uh, thank you. Arguably one of the better releases of the last 10 or 15 years that they've put out. Um, I, I just loved it. Looking forward to a lot more. Hopefully we'll see the band in Montreal at some point and, uh, you know, let's let's give Spread Eagle another shot. Let's let's get at least a, a three song EP thrown up to iTunes or something. Give give the fans a little bit of something. Thank you. I would like to do that, and that's that's totally doable. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's not a long shot. So if we just focus on that, uh, you know, if we do some shows and, and in sixteen, we're going to do some shows, and if we do them and and the mood is really great, maybe maybe uh, you know the guys will be into that, and uh, and we can make it happen. Yeah, let, let's hope. Uh, thank you, Rob. Great pleasure. My pleasure also, Mitch. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And there you have it, folks. My interview with UFO Sebastian Bach bassist Rob DeLuca. The new album is Conspiracy of Stars. Tour starts in March uh, out in Akron, Ohio. If you can, check them out. While you're checking stuff out, head over to Twitter and check me out at Mitch LaFawn. And let me remind you that I am giving away two tickets to Black Sabbath in Montreal on February 23rd, 2016 at the Bell Center with Rival Sons opening up. Head over to the one-on-one -on -one with Mitch LaFon Facebook page, like the page, and then send me a note telling me why you would like to go to the show. And on that, folks, bye for now. <laughs>